gatekeeping <laughs> was a topic of conversation. If you follow me over this previous weekend, and we had some back and forth, even with people that were you think are generally on my side for so- uh, philosophically, excuse me. And there was some back and forth, and it all centered around a tweet that I'm going to explain here in a little bit in terms of what it is that I was talking about. This is the tweet here. It says, I said, when our company launches, remember that my job is to create. I'm not here to hold your hand. And what I mean by that, and I've said this before, a lot of people got it twisted on the whole hand holding thing, and they didn't really understand what I meant by that. What I mean by that is that don't look at me as this easily accessible uh, creator because you see me on a show every day or that I'm always getting out there and, and, and having talks with people because, yeah, the other things that I'm involved in and definitely with me coming out of uh, this space and having my own channel, that's a lot of folks expect that same sort of uh, connectivity with the company, but that's not what it is. I don't want to ruin the, I don't like Kafabi or rather it's more of um, a, uh, from a creative sense, I don't want to ruin that experience for anybody. So when I say I'm not holding your hand, what I mean by that is that I'm here to create and that's it. That is you guys for you guys to do to theorize uh, talks among each other, be excited about what's to come, argue about what you think this that's on y'all to do. It's not on me to do that. That's not what, what it is for me to do. I'm not holding y'all's hand in that regard. So yeah, just cause you see, put it out a book and you, Oh wow. You, you have so much access to this creator because he has all of this space. Space is where he's, he appears. Whatever, talk to him in whatever ways. And yeah, if it's basic stuff, maybe go hyping it up going into the future. But again, that's all about the creativity of the project. I'm not going to be giving you those details there because I want you to be excited and want you guys to uh, um, that lore to be built as we build it and you to be a part of that because that's part of the experience. And this is why I say ultimately the Ripper fandom is yours. Like the Ripper fandom is Riververse fandom, the company. That's y'all's, right? Once it's get once it gets created and it's off the ground, Lord willing, and we have a bunch of stuff that you guys are really excited about. The fandom belongs to to, to y'all. I'm just a creator, and 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 that's how it, it it has to be. You know what I mean? If we're going to be any any form of successful, that needs to be attached and detached at the same time. If that makes sense, of course I want uh, people to be a part of it if they will be. Um, but going into this next point, which is the, the part that I guess some of the guys took issue with, uh, says, "But I do have one request: gatekeep the motherfucker out of it when you spot poses and lies, acting in bad faith. Get him out." Now, you know where this comes from. If you guys have been following me, we've seen what some of our love, the things that we've loved and how they've changed so drastically. And the fandom is where it's centered around. Not saying that that's the reason for it it happening, like these vast changes or this. No, it's, it's the fact that these bad actors have come in and made it about them because that was all that it was ever about. It wasn't about the fandom per se. It was about maybe this group of individuals and their social views. Um, You know, this is how narratives, false narratives get started about, for example, the intention of the X-Men. I've said this before. And what the intention was in the creation. You went a very long time without there being any sort of mention. And you can go look it up yourself if you want to go try to find receipts. There's almost no mention of this, this uh, okay, it was supposed to be the beacon for social justice or or more so represent this idea. And I've done a video, many videos, one of my great videos that I've done long form is called uh, X-Men and the Social Justice Myth. You check it out. But someone, because they wanted to make that brand about them and their uh, initial views, right, that narrative gained gained so much legs, and now people actually believe that shit. Now, I'm just using that as an, an, an example, but that's someone acting in bad faith that clearly planted that seed, and to their credit, I guess, they had it grow. Now, on the creative side of things, you don't have to worry about that because this is not anything that you, um, I will ever allow to happen. Yes, when we expand, there will be people that more people that will be part of the project that are outside of just me and my my tight knit team. So what happens when you grow? However, 
On my side, people that are acting in bad faith will never, ever be a part of this project. And if they are, as far as from the creation standpoint, and if they are, we get them out. Simple. So that you don't have to worry about. But what we're talking about in the fandom sense is this, is this, because with fandoms for any different brand or IP, whatever you want to call it, with those, a lot of that is why people got into that that like brand, even as a customer, right? Some people try to infiltrate fandoms and make the fandoms about them and their social views or whatever. But for a lot of us, the idea that there were people that were like, that were interested in the same thing and uh, they had their chats and they had their talks, their theorizing or whatever it was, that in itself was intriguing and got a lot of people into certain brands because they saw so-and-so talking about it. Like, why wouldn't I want to preserve the sanctity of that fandom if I know that that enhances you guys' experiences because it did with me? Like I didn't, I didn't, just didn't come out the womb being a fan of Marvel or DC. It didn't. That, that's not how it happened. Okay, that enhances people' experiences when you have a healthy and thriving fandom. I'm not looking at this just from a business perspective. Though I believe that having a healthy and thriving fandom will enhance the business uh, anyway. But I'm also looking at this from a fan's perspective. And this is something that I was a part of for other brands. So I want the sanctity of that fandom to be preserved. And that requires people that are in that fandom. If you catch bad actors, if you catch people particularly trying to poison the well, Make them feel as uncomfortable as possible. I will have anybody be a customer that will be a customer of rip, uh, of this Ripperverse. And I'm not going to, you can't even stop anybody as a fan from, from going to purchase a book, whatever. But those folks generally aren't ever going to be customers. They're not. They're just there because they want to infiltrate something that they think is popping. And then they want to make it about them. They should feel very uncomfortable in, in, in that in that fandom. Um, and that's what I had said. And that's what we were talking about. But you had like and again, I don't want to make this like some sort of dramatization because it's not. But you had this like Peter Samedi, uh, who, again, a lot of folks have put us on the same side. And he just completely went the opposite way of, with this. And he says, but why put that burden on your customer? If you run a customer, why would you need your fan of customers to police other fans of customers again first of all i'm not saying this needs to happen nor am i placing a burden on my uh customers this isn't about that at all but when you don't listen to what the fuck it is that i'm saying you often make that mistake but effectively you put fucking words in my, in my mouth because i never once claimed anything about putting a burden um on someone or even attempted to do that or said that this was something that was needed to do as in we couldn't create a company without doing without me making that request no shit we could have but this is much bigger than that and my aspirations may not align with what he is what what he is uh maybe maybe be he said this is essentially saying that the toxic fandom is what ruins company stories and characters not business decision from the inside well, I think that they go hand in hand, but not, neither. But regardless, if you have more than fucking one brain cell, you can acknowledge that both of those can be problems. OK, people can multitask, uh, if you will. So I will say that definitely it's up to the business owner to check what what's being put out. Right. That That's not what we're disputing here. And nobody has at least on my side, made it appear as such. This is why it was such a weird, weird way uh, to respond. It's actually a non-point because we know what we put out is ultimately controlled by us. But we're talking about the fandom uh, per se. I think this guy is looking at it more of, hey, uh, just uh, just ignore it all. Just put the books out and let them do what it is they do. If that's your business model, fine. Um, that's what it is that you, your business model. But I'm coming from it from a perspective of not just – Okay, so being some neutral business owner, I was also a fan. And I know how it feels. I know how important that is to them. And I want my customers to be part of a of a thriving uh, um, and a healthy 
fandom. And of course, I it's my job as a creator to give them something worth supporting. But the fandom is going to be what the fandom is going to be. If you have big aspirations, you have to be prepared for that. And you have to expect it. Hell, you should expect that, that we create some. Look at Marvel and DC. Marvel and DC has all these people who have built entire brands off of their brands and they don't even work for Marvel and DC, whether it be in their podcasting, whether it be with their videos, it is that um, they shoot. You've seen people build entire careers off of that. If your aspirations are big, you should expect something like that is going to happen. And, you know, you can go look at my my uh, stuff here and him, him and I going back and forth. Uh, like I said here, there's no burden. The whole point of me doing what it is that I do is for the fandom and the sanctity of that is as is, is important as ever because it is. This isn't about need. Like, I, yeah, anybody can just be a neutral guy. Don't even fucking be connected to your fandom at all. Don't even have any requests. Just put shit out. Anybody can do that. But what I'm trying to do with my aspirations may not fit in the bubble that it is that you that, that this guy maybe has. And uh, he also says here. He says more gatekeeping is an answer to ending gatekeeping. He's confused because maybe those are his aspirations of what it is, his goal. My goal, I've never set out to end, end, um, what it was this end gatekeeping. That was never my goal. I've never sought out to do that. <laughs> Some would argue that a lot of us are in, or that we're in this position with these uh, fandoms that be, it is because people didn't gatekeep. But I'm not in the, I've never set out to do that. That never has been my problem. He says, create and compete. Let people decide what they like or don't like. Don't try to control who will or won't support you. Again, that's not what we're talking about. People that act in bad faith aren't supporters anyway, Pete. We're specifically talking about and addressing bad actors, people acting in bad faith. Those are not fans. They're people who try to hijack shit and make it about them. You know? That's who we're talking about. We're not talking about any, any Joe Blow uh, 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 fan that's actually a supporter of this. And no shit, people are going to like what they like and not what they like and not uh, dislike what they're going to dislike. That That's a non-point. It's not even worth mentioning. You know? It's not even worth mentioning. And uh, you can see there was some back and forth. And I'll go to some of this just for the sake of transparency, see if I can get to some of those um, here. And let me see if I can get to. Because there was some back and forth that we did that obviously weren't in like quote tweets and all that. I can't see it. I can't find it, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, like we're, we're talking about gatekeeping in the sense of keeping out bad actors. And this isn't a burden on the fandom. Why would, how would it be a fucking burden for them to just, okay, if you, if you spy a poser, a, a person acting in bad faith, especially if it's a fed, they should feel uncomfortable in your fandom. What burden is that putting on them? It's called preserving it. Because this is something that I have long-term aspirations it on it. And because this is not just some guy and I'm not just some guy that just wanted to publish books, right? I wouldn't have done this if this was just, so I got a million other things on my plate between being, this isn't something that I, the only thing it is that I'm doing. Between this, uh, or the, the band, stuff we do with Blaze, stuff that I do with Big Libertarian, stuff that we do with uh, my own and like content creation and all that. Like I got a million other things on my plate. If I was doing this just to be a passion list, creator uh publisher that just wanted to publish shit i wouldn't do it this is a f a long time a comic lifer wanting to create and all of those things that i thought this was about that i thought that i loved and i and i saw being run into the ground by bad actors these are mistakes that we don't want to make and this is part of the fabric of what it is that we're trying to build because I'm not just making one isolated comments or, or being a publishing hub for just creator own company. That's not what it is that I'm doing. Those are not my aspirations. My aspirations is to create an ever expanding universe upon which I facilitate and maybe we compete with these guys. But that's what it is that I'm trying to do. And I would appreciate from people that are in a fandom, I can't, I can't police it. 
The Phantom's going to do what the Phantom's going to do. All I could say is, you know, be a creator and talk about it in that re regards. I catch people lying. We do whatever, whatever it is on our side, on the business side to do that. But ultimately, the Phantom doesn't belong to me. The Phantom belongs to the customers, the actual customers. But with Phantoms, definitely as they become more, uh, they become bigger. You get more supporters. There are always going to be a piece, p a bunch of people that want a piece of that. And they then try to jack it and make it about them. And often their individual views because they're egotistical like that and they're narcissistic like that. They make it about them and they're acting in specifically bad faith to attempt to poison the well. And all I said, my only request is that you should pay attention to that. Don't ignore it. And with our fandom, what happens with the Riververse, those people should feel uncomfortable in it. Because I think the sanctity of this fandom is going to be important to what it is that we're trying to do. And it's going to be important, certainly, for those that value this type of shit. That's all. And the, the point that I will end on. Look at what the, the authoritarian left and the social justice advocates did to you. They infiltrated both sides, businesses and fandoms. And now they're actively destroying the things that you know and love. Actively. And for various reasons, listening to bad information, whatever it is, we can talk about that. Uh, but it happens on both sides. And they have made it to where we've seen people that have had to leave that space because the others have made it abundantly clear, even though they didn't start it, but because their cancer spread, they now have it. And then they say, you know what? Fuck you get out. And so you may look at it like, well, you are repeating, you're becoming what you hate. No, 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 no. I've always credited leftists for doing what it is that they did. I've always done it. They were smart. It was effective. As much as I think they're assholes for it, I will never acknowledge that that I will never not acknowledge the fact that they played the long game and to their credit, it worked. But that kumbaya, don't pay attention to it, is what got us in this fucking mess for many, many, many different brands. And if you don't have aspirations to preserving the sanctity of what it is that you have, that's your business. But with me, and I know it's important to what it is that we're trying to build. That's something that we will focus on. And it's not a burden at all to the audience. You know why? How I know? Because I've been a part of that fucking audience and I've been a part of those fandoms. So, yes, gatekeep the motherfuck out of people that are acting in bad faith and are bad actors. You just listened to a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake, which is live throughout the week at 12 p.m. Central on youtube.com slash youngripper59 and odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. Be sure to check out my website, ericdjuly.com, so you can stay up to date with everything it is that I'm doing. You can also become a member and get access to a bunch of cool perks and exclusive content, which includes a social media hub where you can interact with myself and other members. It even has an app that you can get, which is now live in the Google and Apple stores.